Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a Lego walkie-talkie that's also a Twitch controller. For a really long time, I've wanted to make a life-size Lego sword, the little toy that I had when I was a kid. And recently, I got a text from my friend Bill Duran at Punish Prop saying that he was going to make that project, so now I can't. Thanks, Bill. So I decided to instead make the Lego walkie-talkie. And instead of just making a simple prop that looks like this tiny little toy, we're going to make it functional by putting some electronics in it. Every week we live stream from the shop on Twitch. And to control the Twitch stream, we use a piece of software called OBS. In OBS, you can change scenes and camera modes with key presses on the keyboard. So I want to take that same functionality and actually put it inside this walkie-talkie and make it work over Bluetooth. And to do that, we're going to use this chip from Adafruit called a Feather. This has Bluetooth built onto it and it will send key presses over Bluetooth to the computer. So we're going to put this on the inside of this walkie-talkie and activate each one of those key presses with three simple buttons. The electronics here are super simple. Anybody can do this project and we'll do a simple walkthrough of the code on the second channel. I got a small LiPo battery that plugs right onto the board so this thing can be battery powered and to charge that, you just plug in the USB cable here. Now the buttons just go directly onto the pins of the board, so we're going to solder those three in place, and that's all there is to the electronics. I had Josh make a 3D model of the walkie-talkie, and we basically just used that to be able to print out 2D templates. These are printed on sticker paper so that we can stick them onto the wood and cut them out with a bandsaw. These parts are going to be handled a little bit differently. This one needs to be a cylinder for the antenna, so we're going to turn that on the lathe. This one needs to be a rounded handle. We're going to use the router for that. And these two are going to get sandwiched together with another layer in between to hold all the electronics. So we're going to take these to the sander to get right up to the lines on the template. These little tactile buttons are going to go in between these two pieces. They're going to fit down in here, and we're going to fill the gap around it with some spacers of MDF. So I've got to place these on the surface. They're going to run right up to the edge, and then there'll be a foam button out here that will actually push it. We're going to cut these down into pieces and make a perimeter so that there's a pocket on the inside to hold the electronics. So these buttons all go to a different pin on this board, and then the other side of the buttons all go together to ground. These have pull-up resistors in them, so you don't have to add a separate resistor. All the electronics are going to fit in here, and these buttons are going to be flush mounted on the outside, so they're activated by a bigger button out here. And the only thing I have to really change on the inside of this is cut away a little pocket so that the battery connector can go in there. It's a little bit too tall for this gap, so I just gotta hollow that out so it can sit down there and then the top plate can sit on without squishing anything. Next thing I gotta figure out is how to get these two pieces to stick together, and I'm gonna use one of my favorite things, magnets. I've got these little rare earth magnets, and they're very thin, and I'm gonna mount them on one of these pieces by countersinking a hole, the same depth as the thickness of the magnet, 
and glue it in place. Then we'll put something else on the other side so that this whole thing can just snap together. Now that the magnets are in there, they will hold these two pieces in alignment. So once I've got that locked together, I can then sand all of these outside edges so they'll be perfectly flat and smooth. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is a great online learning community with more than 25,000 courses in all sorts of different topics. If you wanna learn about business or design, photography, videography, there's definitely something there for you. A course that I'm really looking forward to is a new one by Mike Boyd. If you've ever seen Mike's YouTube channel, you know that he learns new things all the time and his course is about his learning process and how he masters new skills. But Mike's course is just one of many courses out there that can help you fuel your creativity, maybe even further your career. Career. If you get a Skillshare premium account, you have unlimited access to every course available. And if you get an annual subscription, it's less than $10 a month. But even better than that, the first 500 people to hit the link down in the description will get two months for free. That's pretty awesome and you can learn a whole lot of stuff in two months. So be sure to be one of those 500 people, go down and click that link. Thanks Skillshare. Obviously I have the wrong kind of blade on my bandsaw right now for that type of curved cut. That's a three quarter inch blade, which is usually for resawing or long straight cuts. Just wanted to let you know, if you wanna make tight cuts on a bandsaw, you're gonna need a thinner blade. So the next step is to make these stud pieces that go on the top. Now, I'm obviously making this in kind of a complex way. If you had a laser or a CNC, you could do all this stuff without having to manually cut all these pieces. But I'm trying to make this without using those digital tools, even though we started with the 3D model. I thought it'd be fun to make this in a way that uses tools that most people have at their disposal. So we're gonna use the drill press here and actually cut out a ring out of a piece of MDF. Now, I've never done this before. I'm not entirely sure that it's gonna work, but I think it will. We've got these rings ready. These are gonna go on right here, but first we gotta take off this template. Anytime you use a sticker template like that, or even if you use spray adhesive, you can use a heat gun with some light heat to release that adhesive and you can peel it right off. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to sand it. Now that we've got the wooden part finished, it's time to put the buttons on the outside of this to press the actual tactile buttons on the inside. Now for that, I'm gonna use EVA foam. I thought about actually making this entire thing out of EVA foam, but ended up going with wood so that this surface would be the one compressible part. That way, when you push on the outside, it will compress that button and touch the little tactile button on the inside. If the entire thing was foam, the entire thing would give when you pushed on a part of it. And to make these little tiny circles, we're gonna use this aluminum tube. First, I'm gonna take it to the sander and make a blade out of the end, then we'll cut them out of foam. So now that you've got this little sharp edge on here, you can just put it on the foam, push down and twist, and it cuts a little plug. I 
I'm gonna go ahead and paint these black, but first I'm gonna prime them really well because the MDF is gonna soak up all the paint. I'm gonna do a couple of coats of this filler primer and then maybe a light sanding before I put the black paint on. Here are the two outside pieces all painted up. I used an enamel paint, so you end up with a pretty smooth finish without a whole lot of work. It's not perfect, but it'll do just fine for this. I'm gonna put the electronics right in here. The only thing I've changed is I added an on and off switch that goes directly to the board. So I'm gonna hold these buttons in these little voids and then fill them with hot glue to keep the button in place. I got those buttons glued in and it's very ugly, yes, but everything should be held in place and we can glue these other big buttons on the outside of these. We gotta test to make sure that the power switch works and you should be able to see the blue LED bouncing in there and that means that it is powered and we're all good to go. And this thing now snaps on and it's looking pretty awesome. I've got these buttons ready to put on and I'm not actually crazy about how they look. Like the foam and the wood next to each other, you can just tell that there's a material difference. But I really wanted to have the squishiness of that foam to activate the button. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on and if it works well, I may leave it. Otherwise I may end up swapping these out for small dowel rods painted black, but we'll see. Okay, watch down here. I'm gonna turn this thing on and it should pop up as one of the devices down here on my phone. I click on that and now it's connected. I've got a blank document here and as I push these buttons, different letters will be sent to that document just so you can see that they're working. Those letters will eventually trigger something in OBS on my main computer. So if I press this one, you can see the letter A shows up. If I press this one, the letter S. And you can assign those to any key press that you want, whatever your software is expecting. So this thing is all good to go. Here's the final object. And the only thing I changed on the inside was I swapped out a couple of these buttons with limit switches. It's pretty cool because they have a little metal arm that you can adjust in case the button's not quite hitting. Those worked really well and this is what the electronics look like on the inside. Of course, it's pretty ugly because it doesn't really have to be pretty and it has to fit in kind of a small container. Now it's time to test this thing out with OBS. I've got camera changes in here mapped to the same key commands that this is gonna be sending out. I've got this thing turned on, and so now we're gonna test it just by pressing these buttons. It works really well. I've got three cameras set up right now and only three buttons on here, so it works out pretty well. But you can quickly and easily switch between the different scenes, and pretty much any streaming software you're using has some sort of a hotkey built into it. In fact, you can apply this to any piece of software that has hotkeys like Photoshop or Illustrator. Effectively, this is just a wireless keyboard. So anything you can do with a wireless keyboard, you could do with something like this. Obviously, you don't have to make a Lego thing. The real key in this project is this board. It's battery powered, so it's a great solution for a wireless project, but also having Bluetooth on board lets it connect to all sorts of other devices. Also, if you've never seen our Twitch stream, we do it every week. We'll have links to it down in the description if you wanna come hang out with us. It's a really cool community of people over there. We've got a whole lot of other types of videos that you may be interested in, so check some of those out. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that as well. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And recently, I got a text from my fin. My fin. Meh. Ah. That's great. Not the camera. It's painted. And I didn't do a great paint job. Paint job.